This is Wraith from Wraith Rain. I'm an author of serialized gay romance fiction. Every week on this podcast, I'll be reading a chapter from one of my gay fantasy shifter serials called Dragon's Rain. I'll explain at the break how you can find out more about the story and others I write. So let's get to it. Chapter 96. Together. Valerius watched as Iolair's head lowered, and it made soft hooting sounds, clearly feeling so guilty, so responsible for all the deaths and destruction that had occurred and would occur. Did not know it would follow, that it could follow. Thought the connection was gone, Iolair explained. Even though I could still feel something. Thought I was free. Thought it was over, been so long. Thought it would be safe, but no, my fault. You are not at fault, Iolair, Ken cried. Valerius, tell Iolair that it isn't at fault. Of course you are not at fault, Iolair. You are the behemoth's victim. Valerius reassured both his lover and the white dragon spirit. Caden reached over blindly and squeezed Valerius's shoulder in thanks. Iolair hooted softly and looked at him out of grateful blue eyes, but its head was still lowered and its expression still sad. Caden went up to the mirror and put his hand on the glass over Iolair's head as if to touch the dragon spirit. Valerius wished Caden could physically comfort Iolair. The white dragon spirit pushed its nose against the glass, but could not get to Caden, no matter how hard it tried. Raziel stared down at the two of them, and there was a curious expression on its face, tender and sad. As close as they were to their spirits, they were just as far away. Valerius touched the mirror, too. Raziel saw his hand and lowered its massive head and pressed it against where his hand was. He thought he felt warmth through the mirror and not just cold glass. We need to tell the others about this, Caden said as he petted the glass. No, Raziel's nostrils flared. They will blame Iolair for this. For what? Caden demanded. For doing what you and every other spirit has done? For coming here and connecting to a human? It didn't know that the behemoth could come here. I brought danger here, Iolair shook its head, if I had not come. No, Iolair, this unrest has been coming on for longer than your coming, Valeria stated emphatically. It's clear that the behemoth has been acting in this world far before last week. Yeah, Iolair, this stuff with the faith has been going on for years, Cain agreed. Sarai and Fidel were taken over far before you came here and joined with me. But now the behemoth is here. Not just in the spirit world, Iolair pointed out. That it could not do before my actions. You saved many lives by coming here. You defeated one of its plans unknowingly, Valerius pointed out. In fact, I think you coming here, drawing it to this realm, was a good thing. Iolair and Raziel looked at him intently. Caden turned towards him too. There was hope written large on all of their faces. The behemoth could not be stopped before it came to this realm, Valerius explained. All the free dragon spirits are here, are they not? Iolair hooted. Ah, oh, the rest are with it. So you see, the behemoth was beyond our reach, your reach before, Valerius stated. Once a thing has come here, it can be destroyed. We are nine, nine against one. We need to bring the other dragon spirits here so that you all can speak to one another. But, but they will not trust Iolair, Raziel cried. They will think it is still under the behemoth's influence. So the behemoth likes to be petted, adores kids, wants people to dance in the snow? Caden shook his head. Anyone who knows Iolair will recognize it isn't at all controlled by the behemoth. Valerius caught Raziel's gaze and said simply, Lying to others or ourselves is not the right way forward, Raziel. Raziel tossed its head. They have no right to judge Iolair. They have no right to... If Iolair is in any danger from the behemoth, whether physical or spiritual, we must know, Raziel, Valeria stated. Caden whirled around to face him. Those innocent blue eyes were huge. Valerius, you don't think... No, I don't think Iolair is being controlled. But that does not mean it could not be affected in some way by the behemoth. Sarai was a shifter, and she was affected... Fidel, I believe, was human, and he was affected. Valerius took hold of Caden's arms. Iolair has told us that it still feels some connection to the behemoth. We must not ignore this. No, but... 
Caden bit his lip. It just feels so wrong that Iolair would have anything to do with that, that monster. I know. I am still trying to accept this fairy tale as real. Valerius grimaced and shook his head. But now that I know it is, I will not close my mind to any possibility, nor should you either. Caden nodded miserably. Iolair has brought such joy to people. And a new understanding among the dragon shifters, Valerius added. Iolair will continue to do so because it is special and a different kind of dragon spirit. But I will not ignore Iolair's concerns, would you? Caden shook his head and passed a hand over his forehead. Imagine what the press would have said if they knew the behemoth was real and that Iolair had, had been a part of it, though. Valerius did not want to think about that. But really, he feared more what the behemoth could do to Iolair and Caden more than he feared any bad press. The behemoth is in this world now. It must have joined with a human. Perhaps at that ceremony that Anwar showed us, or... His voice suddenly died as a horrible thought occurred to him. Caden's eyes became huge, catching his thoughts before he could stop them from leaking out over their bond. What if... If Iolair having a bonded human is enough, what if the behemoth is joined with me too? Valerius, though, was violently shaking his head. I would think if that was the case, when you shift, you would become the behemoth, and not just Iolair. But you don't. I do not understand this connection between Iolair and the behemoth, but I do not believe it touches you. Would never let the behemoth hurt Caden. Iolair was standing tall, wings outstretched, blue eyes crackling with might. I know, Iolair, Valerius stated. Nor would I, Raziel added, rising above the white dragon spirit like a mountain. But he did not know, and he didn't think the dragon spirits knew either, what the behemoth could do no matter what Iolair wanted. Did the Hydra have access to Caden in some way? He said no. He believed that, and yet his soul felt sick and wanted to shrivel away at the idea. But he could not. Danger was here. He would face it head on. <sighs> Those moments when, when we weren't able to shift Iolair. Cain said suddenly, could that have something to do with the behemoth? Like maybe it was in the world and so shifting was hard? Or maybe it didn't want to shift? I don't know. Iolair hooted that it didn't think so. It sensed nothing of the behemoth and Caden. Those are likely just nerves, Caden. Nothing more, Valeria stated as he smoothed his hands up and down his lover's arms. Caden, though, did not look so certain. You didn't have such nerves. I was in the middle of battle when Rosil and I joined. Hatred and rage has a way of blasting through one's doubts, Valerius reminded him. Yeah, we don't really know, Caden cried and wrapped his arms around himself. He cupped Caden's face. I know. There is nothing in you of that thing, Caden. Caden nodded, but still appeared miserable. Valerius firmly looked at the two dragon spirits as he stated, I do not know whether it was our failure to not ask more of you and your history, or if you were hiding what you did not see as important. But we cannot allow such secrets between us. Mates and the behemoth? These things are crucial for us all to understand, but you kept them from us. As Caden stated, we are in this together. The white and black dragon spirits exchanged looks and then turned back to him and Caden. They both nodded. And it is not just the four of us either, Valerius said. All the dragon shifters must know. I will. Before Valerius could say more, the doors of the throne room were thrown open and Esme appeared, followed by the other dragon shifters. Scylla told me about, about the behemoth. And not just Scylla, Esme said, looking pale and uncertain in the dim light. The behemoth is real. They fought it. They thought they destroyed it. Scylla appeared in the mirror beside Raziel and Iolair. Scylla flapped its wings tentatively, asking to draw near and be accepted. Iolair hooted eagerly, but Raziel kept the white dragon spirit well within its powerful arms, but nodded for Scylla to lean in and touch foreheads with Iolair. Oh, Esme, Scylla and Iolair are so cute together. Lana wants some cuddles too, Kayla cried. Lana appeared in the mirror. Her turquoise scales reminded Valerius of Bahamian Sea. Unlike Scylla, who had requested to be near, Lana, like her human, simply busted its way in. Scylla lifted an eyebrow. Raziel's eyes were narrowed. But Iolair let out barks of laughter, showering them all with snow. Lana appeared to love the snow, snaking its tongue out to taste it. Iolair opened its mouth and caused a huge mountain of snow to appear. Lana made a very undignified squeal of delight and tossed itself into the snow. Snow flew up everywhere, coating all of the dragons. Caden snorted. 
Ah, Caden, can't you make snow here? Kayla asked, her hands balled into anxious fists. I want to do that too. Dear, we have to speak about something important. Making snow angels can wait, Esme countered. I do my best thinking about bad things while I make snow angels, Kayla pouted. Your territory doesn't get cold enough for snow, May stated as she glided into the room. Her dragon spirit, Zipple, appeared in the mirror with its delicate branch-like horns. Its golden mane moved as if there was a constant wind. Elegant and deadly, Zipple did not join Nana in the snowbank. In fact, it put one clawed toe into a nearby clump of snow. There was a hiss as the snow melted, turning to water and then almost instantly to steam. Iolair hooted at Zipple, who regarded the white dragon spirit out of narrowed red-gold eyes. Iolair attempted to go over to Zipple, but Raziel put a firm arm around Iolair's waist to keep it where it was. But Iolair somehow slithered out of the restraining arm and went over to Zipple anyways. Caden glanced at May. Neither of them had moved, but her eyebrows were lifted, as were Zipple's. Both were not large dragons, more like evenly matched in terms of size. But Zipple, like its human, was not trustworthy. Valeria stiffened as Iolair delicately sniffed at Zipple's throat. The red dragon spirit's eyes widened, and magma dripped from its jaws and plopped down on the ground, glowing redly. Iolair was not determined. It breathed icy breath at the glowing magma that was lifted into the air and transformed. Whoa! Cain breathed and leaned forward. Iolair just... Create a sculpture out of Zipple's magma with its breath? Yes, dear, Iolair did. Esme stated with a delighted laugh. The sculpture looked to be an infinity symbol made of dark, glassy rock. Iolair nosed it towards Zipple and hooted. A gift, May whispered, blinking rapidly. For me? For us? I think so, Caden said with a smile twitching at the corners of his mouth. You guessed May's love of gifts, Valerius asked over their bond. I don't think many people genuinely give or do much for May. Caden responded to him in kind. I think they all want something from her and Zipple. That's the kind of people she surrounds herself with. That is not you and I alone, though. Valerius put a hand on Caden's right shoulder. No, and I'm hoping that it makes May and Zipple realize that not everyone is like she believes or fears, Caden admitted. Zipple reached down and lifted the glittering rock and studied it. The red dragon spirit looked up at Iolair, then back down at the sculpture. Confusion was writ large there for a moment. Finally, Zipple inclined its head and flapped its wings in greeting to the newest dragon spirit. Iolair tipped its head back and emitted a flurry of snowflakes. Zipple sent out sparks. Red and white danced in the air currents in the cavern. Our presence being given out? Eldron is beside itself after revealing all of the details of the battle with the behemoth. Tez cried as he strode over to Caden and Valerius, one hand outstretched. That was all Iolair, Tez. I don't have anything you want. Caden reached his hands into his pockets and pulled out a mint. Unless you want a linty mint, you can have it. Tez plucked it from Caden's hand. Well, well, that's something, I suppose. We share what we can, and you do that, Caden. You are not really going to keep that, are you? Valerius frowned as Tez dusted it off and stuck it in his pocket. Why not? A gift is a gift, Tez remarked. Elderon appeared in the mirror and immediately struck a pose, or so it seemed in Valerius's gaze. Raziel rolled its eyes as the golden dragon spirit slowly spread its glorious wings. Glittering golden light filled the cavern. The other dragon spirits all looked over at it. Zipple immediately glanced away as it continued to study the gift Iolair had made. Scylla shook herself and sighed. Lana was still in the snow and called out for Elderon to join it. Lana wants Elderon to stop preening and play. Kayla stomped a foot in front of Tez. Tez's lips twitched, but he said with all seriousness, Elderon must allow everyone to see its beauty. When was the last time all the dragons were together? Well, except for Anwar, just this afternoon, Kayla pointed out with a shake of her head. Lana formed a snowball and threw it at Elderon. It hit the golden dragon spirit on the cheek. Outraged eyes turned to Lana from Elderon as the snowball slowly slid down Elderon's magnificent cheek. Caden let out a bark of laughter, which after Tez's glare turned into a coughing fit. Hilarious patted his back. Did you know that you can get some of my gay romance books for free? Every month, I have at least one book free to download right from Amazon, so you can easily read it on any device. 
but these books can only be free for five days at a time. If you don't want to miss out, just sign up for my mailing list and I'll send you an email whenever there's a free book available. The link to the sign up form is in the description down below. Elderon tried to preen again, but another snowball made its way towards the golden dragon spirit, hitting it on the chest. Iolair let out a soft hoot as its blue eyes narrowed with laughter. Iolair, Kin cried. Elderon immediately leaped over to the snow pile and opened its jaws before blowing a mighty breath on the snow, which covered Lana and Iolair in piles of the fluffy stuff. There was a scuffle among the three of them, but it was playful, though it shook the cavern as the titanic Elderon was gotten on his back by Lana and Iolair working together. Two against one, Tez cried in feigned affront. Raziel and Scylla looked down at the scuffling dragon spirits with the distinct appearance of being well above such activities. Of course, that was when snowballs were thrown at them as well. Raziel let out a huff of heat and melted most of the snow. Iolair, Elderon, and Lana looked bereft. That was when Scylla blew out a stream of water towards Iolair, which the white dragon spirit immediately turned into ice statues of beautiful shapes. So I do get a present, Tez murmured as Elderon lifted one of the delicate, already melting sculptures. It was clear from Zipple's look that it believed its red stone one, which was permanent, was far superior. How long has it been since we've all been together like this? Jahara asked as she glided in like the queen she was with a faint smile on her face. Too long, I think, Esme stated. You still believe my plan for us all to be in one territory is unworkable, Valerius? Jahara asked as she stepped to his side. For a short while we all get along, but yes. I think as a long-term solution it is not a workable one, he told her. I rule nothing out, but that would feel like a retreat, not a victory. Zephira appeared in the mirror. Its iridescent purple scales were luminous in the low light. A wind swept from it and stirred all the other dragon spirits' wings. They all lifted their heads as if eager to take flight. Zephira smiled enigmatically as its human did. If the behemoth is here, dear, we cannot retreat. We must go forward, Esme cried with a gesture of her arms. Scylla flapped its wings. We defeated this behemoth before. It was Larian who spoke. We can do so again. But this time, we make sure it is dead and gone. We? You mean our spirits, Tez pointed out. We knew nothing about the behemoth. Our spirits are more powerful with us. We add much to them as they add to us, Alarian stated. The Green Dragon King strode into the throne room and headed right towards Valerius' throne. Mephis appeared in the mirror, huge and bulging. Poison swirled around the Green Dragon Spirit's head. Raziel turned to face it. They were almost evenly matched, except that Raziel was bigger, which it demonstrated by sticking its chest out as it glared at Mephis. The Green Dragon Spirit, who had been attempting to make its way to the center of all the Dragon Spirits, much like Valerian was doing and going towards the throne, stopped dead in its tracks. Valerius stepped neatly in front of Valerian, which caused him to stop too. Raziel's red eyes glowed like the pits of hell, while its tail swept dangerously back and forth, as if winding up for a leap. Mephis's head lowered, not in obeisance, but also as if it were preparing to lunge towards Raziel. Valerius and Alarian were practically chest to chest. Valerius smiled at him grimly. I do not know how I ever thought that you were the mastermind behind all of this, Valerius murmured, as if I would have puny humans fight my battles or hide behind the faith, Alarian scoffed. Mephis's head was surrounded in a swirling cloud of poison, almost as if the green dragon spirit were smoking. Raziel allowed flames to surround its open jaws. Uh, Gaius? Caden asked. I I don't think fighting is a good idea right now. We need to talk. Fighting is always a good idea. Alarian practically purred. You need to be trounced every 30 years, Valerius stated flatly. Suddenly both of them were dashed with cold water, or more like snow. Snow covered both of their human forms, and there was an ice wall that was separating their dragon ones. Both men shot angry looks at Caden. Alarian, Valerius, stop, Caden shouted. Iolair clawed its way to the top of the ice wall and looked evenly at both the green and black dragon spirits. Its wings flared out and it hooted firmly. This, the other dragon spirits actually shuffled as if brought to order. Valerius bared his teeth at Alarian. 
but then gestured for the green dragon shifter to go ahead and sit on the throne. It will never be yours, Alarian, but I suppose I could let you pretend to be me, Valeria stated. Alarian's upper lip writhed back from his teeth, but he turned it into a tight smile. Why would I want to pretend to be lesser than I am? Alarian asked. He turned his back on the throne and crossed his arms while staring at the mirror, as if without seeing any of the dragon spirits reflected there. Evren was not with the other dragon spirits when the behemoth was taken down, Anwar said as he entered the throne room last. It had thought that this battle was the fairy tale, but clearly no. No, Raziel stated. Anwar's head jerked towards Raziel in the mirror. The other dragon spirits had yet to speak. Evren's sleek silver body entered the mirror, and Iolair hooted to it. Come nearer. Evren looked up at Iolair on top of the ice wall with an almost wry amusement as it took in that one of the smallest dragon spirits, rather like itself, was ruling over all the bigger ones. It sat and curled its long tail around its clawed feet. Raziel speaks, Anwar said with a soft laugh at the end. Raziel has been quite chatty, if only it had been before. Valerius stated with a huff. He rubbed the back of his neck, but there is more to even tell now. Valerius looked at Caden. Did his lover wish to do this, or would he have Valerius do it? Caden looked stricken, and Valerius knew that Caden was experiencing Iolair's emotions. Guilt, responsibility, sadness, fear. Valerius put an arm around Caden's shoulders and kissed his temple. Raziel rubbed its head against Iolair's in the mirror. Scylla says, Esme gasped as she looked at Iolair, Scylla says that Iolair was part of the behemoth. What? No, that can't be true. If it was, is it still? More questions were loosed from every throat. Valerius allowed them to get the questions out. Finally, silence fell. Into that silence, Valerius said, let me explain what we know. And he did. All of them listened intently. There were nods of agreement, sharp intakes of breath, and brow furrowing. He finished all too soon with the facts that they had figured out so far. As you see, we have more questions than answers, Valerius stated. We know that the behemoth was defeated once, but in the spirit realm. We do not know if it has joined with a human or if Iolair, having done so, anchors it here. But now that it is here, part of the physical realm, it would seem to me that destroying it would be possible, or at least we could send it back to the spirit realm. Should we attempt to destroy it? Jahara asked. You must be joking. What else would we do? Alarian scowled at her. Indeed, Jahara, Anwar stated, we cannot allow this being to remain here. It has already poisoned so many minds, taken so many souls. Who knows what Elsa can do? Yes, I know, Jahara stated patiently. But don't you see that if Iolair escaped the behemoth, that means the other dragon spirits that are part of it might be able to be freed as well? Iolair is the mate of Raziel. What if, what if our mates are the ones that the behemoth still has in its clutches? Do you want to destroy them too? I hope you're enjoying Dragon's Reign so far. Dragon's Reign is free for you to enjoy, but not free for us to make. There is a whole team working with me for audio editing, artwork, graphic design, and custom music. Most YouTube channels and podcasts have sponsors and take ads, but because of the kind of content we make, we can't run ads or get sponsors. Instead, we have other ways you can support me and the team behind this gay romance audiobook. One easy way is to buy or borrow my books from Amazon. They are all gay romance set in alternative worlds with vampires or shifters and other magical beings. You may not know that even if you borrow books with your Kindle Unlimited subscription at Amazon, they are free for you, but they still earn us money. The books are published under the name Ex Aratare, which actually means wraith in Romanian. And if you love audiobooks, you can get professionally narrated versions of every one of my books on audible.com. The link to my author page is in the description below, as well as to the first book of the series I think you'll really like. Thank you so much for your support. People like you enable me and the team to keep writing these stories of gay romance, magic, monsters, and true love and producing this very fun podcast for everyone. Thank you.